So we are now familiar with the three simplifications of the boundary layer flow model. Uh, the first one was the Sifan flow model, uh, second was, was the Kuwait flow model and the third uh, is the Reynolds flow model. In today's lecture, I shall develop the Stefan flow model further for a variety of mass transfer problems that we encounter in engineering practice. Uh, the types of problems that we encounter are as follows. Uh, first is the inert mass transfer without heat transfer or chemical reaction. Uh, this means uh, something like simple evaporation of water where the water and the environment are all at the same temperature. So, there is no temperature gradient and as a result there is no heat transfer uh, nor is there any chemical reaction because water is simply evaporates without any chemical reaction and the mass transfer however takes place because of the concentration gradients. The next would be uh, where let us say the water droplet or, or water itself in a lake is at a different temperature from that at the infinity state or the environment in which case there would be heat transfer either to the water or from the water to the environment depending on which temperature is larger. Then we will move to uh, the situation in which uh, there would be chemical reaction or combustion uh, in which uh, let us say a liquid droplet uh, or uh, would be burning uh, along with heat transfer from the, from the environment to the droplet. And finally, uh, but there we would use what is called as simple chemical reaction and I will explain what that means. But many a times particularly when dealing with burnings of solids we need the reaction mechanism is so complex that uh, we have to deal with that situation somewhat differently. So, I will deal uh, I will develop the forms of mass transfer uh, relationships uh, that evolve for the four types of mass transfer problems. As you will recall the under steady state the, the mass transfer equation would be something like this uh, n psi y a uh, equal to all that uh, and psi uh, can stand for the mass fraction or element mass fraction or enthalpy. The, the radiation term is of course uh, neglected in this uh, uh, energy equation and uh, m dot double prime y k as you will recall is the uh, diffusion mass flux uh, as per the Fick's law of diffusion. So, these are the source terms in each of these equations. R k would be finite when there is a chemical reaction if not it will be 0. So, let us consider the first type inert mass transfer without heat transfer. So, let us say I have a tank here with a with water in it and the water evaporates because the in the infinity state the air is either dry or or has a relative humidity less than 100 percent and therefore there would be mass transfer from water to the infinity state the column height that I have considered above the the water is l and the air in the in the column is stagnant stefan flow model as you know is primarily applied to diffusion mass transfer. Both water and air are at the same temperature and therefore there is no heat transfer. Air also does not dissolve in water as such there will be no uh, transfer of air from the considered phase into the water phase. Steady state prevails uh, that is water is supplied at the, at the bottom at the evaporation rate. What this means is that somehow we have constructed an apparatus in which water is supplied at the same rate at which it is it is evaporating and therefore the column height l would remain constant uh, or the water level will remain constant now in this problem we have two spaces one is the air a and the water vapor v and therefore the governing equation for this because there is no mass uh, there is no chemical reaction as you will see in the previous equation uh, n v y a would be equal to 0 for uh, both air and water. So, that is what I have written here. 
This means that the mass transfer rate m dot w in kg per second would be area a w uh, into n w is equal to a times uh, n v y plus n a y uh, equal to a constant because this is gradient is 0. But in stagnant air m a w is, is equal to 0 because uh, there is no mass transfer of air in this it is stagnant and therefore, uh, therefore omega a plus omega v is equal to 1 of course uh, and we note this uh, and therefore in this equation you will see that n a y will be set to 0 and m dot w would be simply a times n v y and that is what I have written here. So, m dot w will be m dot of vapor only equal to a times n v y and n v y as you know is the convective mass flux plus diffusion mass flux and that would be equal to a rho m v or if I rearrange this notice that a rho m v is simply m dot w. So, therefore, m dot w into omega v minus rho m d a into d omega v by d y would be equal to m dot w or if I transfer this on on the right hand side then you will see it will be 1 minus omega v equal to m dot w by uh, rho m d dy by a and uh, if a is equal to a w is equal to constant that is uh, if I take the constant area model then uh, simply n w which is equal to m dot w by a w and integration would give me uh, rho m d by l ln 1 minus uh, omega v infinity over omega 1 minus omega v w equal to g g star m into ln 1 plus b m. This bracket 1 minus omega v infinity into 1 minus omega v w can also be written as omega v infinity minus omega v w over omega v w minus 1 and uh, g m star would be rho m d by l. It has the same units as the mass flux n w and this is uh, a constant and a, a when written in this form b m is called the driving force for mass transfer to occur and it is given in this fashion. So, you get a very simple logarithmic formula for mass flux uh, or the evaporation rate instantaneous evaporation rate uh, in a uh, of water. In the spherical system supposing I have a droplet then uh, then the surface area a would go on changing with the radius and uh, a would be equal to 4 pi r square uh, as we go along and a would go on changing. So, a would be function of y if you like. Uh, so, in that case you will see d omega v 1 minus omega v would equal m dot w rho m d into d r by 4 pi r square. Uh, integration from r equal to r w which is the droplet radius to r equal to infinity gives ln 1 minus infinity over 1 minus omega v w equal to this quantity with r w in the denominator. Remember 1 over r infinity would be of course, 0 and therefore, only r w survives. Uh, if I re rearrange this equation it would be written in this fashion n w will be equal to m dot w divided by area of the uh, spherical droplet uh, 4 pi r w square would be equal to rho m d r w uh, into this quantity which again can be written as 1 ln 1 plus b m uh, where b m is again as before omega v infinity minus omega v w into omega v w minus 1 and g m star which is the coefficient if you like uh, is rho m d divided by r w instead of uh, l in the previous problem uh, a, a when the area is constant. So, we get uh, mass uh, flux uh, in this again a logarithmic form uh, when area changes. So, both the results show that in diffusion mass transfer you get n w equal to g star m ln 1 plus b m, but as b m tends to 0 you can check out on your pocket calculator that ln 1 plus b m tends to b m for both positive or negative b m. Thus, the linear variation n w g into b m holds only for very small mass transfer rate b m or n w whichever way you want to look at it. Uh, 
typically when B m is of the order of 0 0.02 or less, this relationship holds very well. Uh, and of course, when B m is negative, uh, then of course, it will imply condensation. When B m is positive, uh, it would imply evaporation. Therefore, in general, we may write N w equal to G B m, where G over G star m is equal to L n 1 plus B m by B m and where G star is the value of G when B m tends to 0. Now, although this result has been found from uh, uh, for diffusion mass transfer, we shall later on show that the result has significance even in convective mass transfer. Let us now consider the case of uh, inert mass transfer with heat transfer in which case let us say the water and the environment are at different temperatures. So, let us say the in temperature of the environment is greater than that of the surface, where T w is the temperature uh, of the water surface and then uh, under steady state besides species conservation equation, we must now invoke the energy equation. And that for uh, as you will see from uh, our first slide here, we are invoking this equation. So, d n v y h m a divided by d y would be d by d y of a k m d t d y which is the conduction heat transfer plus this is the fixed law of diffusion multiplied by h k which is in this case would be omega v by d y uh, h of vapor plus d omega a by d y h of air and the mixture enthalpy in this case would be the mass fraction of water vapor into enthalpy of uh, water vapor plus 1 minus omega v which is the mass fraction of air into enthalpy of air. Uh, H v of course, would be given by specific heat of vapor into T minus T ref plus lambda ref which is the latent heat at temperature T ref and H a would have only the sensible part C p a into T minus T ref and uh, uh, the mixture specific heat would be uh, simply omega v into C p v plus uh, omega air into C p air. So, that is what this formula is there. Now, let us look at this term k m d t d y. Now, k m can be written as rho m alpha m C p m d t by d y and that is equal to rho m alpha m and if I absorb C p m d t d y and put C p m equal to all this, uh, you will see that you, you get omega v into d h v by d y plus omega a into d h a by d y. This result is an important one which we are now going to substitute here. So, you will get d n v y h m a by d y equal to d by d y of rho m a alpha m omega v d h v by d y plus omega d h a by d y plus the second term which is the fixed law of diffusion term which carries with it enthalpy of the species. Now, in mass transfer problem, it is common to define Schmidt number as nu by diffusivity and uh, we define Lewis number as Prandtl divided by Schmidt number which is equal to diffusivity of mass divided by diffusivity of heat. Now, for gaseous mixtures, Lewis number is very, very close to 1. For example, as you know, Prandtl number is about 0 0.7. Schmidt number would be about 0 0.67 to 0 0.68 in, in this kind of systems. So, in, in effect Lewis number L e can be taken as very nearly 1, which implies that d is equal to alpha, d is equal to alpha. If I make that assumption, then uh, you will see that uh, and replace uh, these rho m into d into rho m into alpha as gamma. Uh, as I have defined here gamma m h equal to rho m d uh, equal to rho m alpha m, then you will see this becomes gamma m h into a plus uh, d by d y of simply product of omega v h v plus omega h a, which is nothing but uh, the mixture enthalpy d h m by d y. So, we essentially get d by d y n v y h m a equal to d by d y of this. Now, from species conservation, we have learned that N v y remains constant, which is equal to N w, the, the, the mass transfer at the surface itself uh, remains constant throughout in a, in a constant area problem, 
then uh, hence the last result can be written as d by dy of n a n w h m minus h m t minus gamma m h into d by dy h m minus h m t, where h m t is simply the the enthalpy of the transferred substance and it is a constant. So, all I have done is really added uh, or subtracted h m minus h t and here h m minus h t and therefore, uh, I made really no change. So, h m t would be the C p of the liquid into temperature of the transferred substance which is water in this particular example minus T rep is the specific enthalpy of the makeup water deep inside the neighboring phase. C p l is the specific heat of the liquid. Now, this is again a conserved property equation in h m minus h m t. So, it is exactly same as the equation we had for omega v and therefore, its solution too would be identical n w equal to g star m h l n h m infinity minus h m t over h m w minus h m t, which uh, I would write as g star m h into l n 1 plus b h in this case, where b h is now formed from h m minus infinity minus h m w over h m w minus h m t and g star m h would be gamma m h over r w in case of a spherical system and this would be the case in case of a linear system. So, we find that the logarithmic form is again retrieved from the solution of the energy equation because uh, just as we had recovered the logarithmic form in case of mass transfer without heat transfer. Now, since Lewis number is equal to 1 gamma m h would be equal to gamma m and gamma h because thermal diffusivity is equal to mass diffusivity and hence you will see B h which is h m infinity minus h m w or h m w minus h m t would also be equal to omega v infinity minus omega v w omega v w minus 1. Now, this relation provides the important link with between the mass fraction of vapor at the wall and the temperature of the wall. Remember when the temperature of the surroundings is at t infinity and the liquid which is T t is at some other temperature, we still do not know what the surface temperature T w will be uh, and we need to determine that in such problems. So, how do we determine that? We use this relationship that is B m is equal to B h and uh, uh, h m w would be then h v w omega v w h a w into 1 minus omega v w and if I take uh, T ref equal to 0, then H m w will be simply C p a into T w into C p v minus C p a T w plus lambda at 0 degree uh, lambda at T ref equal to 0 into omega v w. So, hence for a given T infinity and T t, the B m equal to B h relationship will iteratively give omega v and omega and T w. So, what one does is one simply assumes a value of T w h m infinity of course, can be can be obtained because you know already omega v infinity, you know T infinity and therefore, that can be obtained. This too can be obtained as we saw on the last slide. This can be obtained knowing T w only thing is you do not know omega v w. So, how do we get that omega v w? We can get that by saying that at the surface of the water uh, saturation conditions would prevail uh, and uh, corresponding to R h equal to 100 percent and therefore, that value of omega v w can be uh, can be noted either from uh, uh, from the psychrometric chart or you can also use steam tables in which case you will get a partial pressure. Uh, so, that uh, from which you can recover the mass fraction of the wall. If after assuming T w you have determined omega v w in this way, uh, you substitute uh, in the B m expression. If you find that B h is equal to B m, then obviously, your choice of T w was correct and therefore, you already have T w omega v w relationship. If however, the two equations do not balance, then you must change the value of T w uh, till you get till you get balance between B m and B h. So, iterations are involved in, in discovering temperature T w. Now, in order to help uh, uh, if you are doing something on the computer, then uh, for air water vapor mixture 
uh, saturation condition that is this the saturation curve on the psychometric chart uh, is uh, given like this, where uh, this is the T dry bulb and this is the uh, specific in, uh, humidity uh, and uh, uh, you have the 100 percent R H line. So, the values corresponding to this have been correlated here in uh, omega V w uh, as a function of T w for the range of T w minus 20 to 100 and uh, for computer applications to in order to help iterations you one can use this relationship or simply try by hand this is just for your information. So, now of course, uh, when you consider a fuel we do not know the omega v w t w relationship by way of a psychrometric chart or anything like that and therefore, such a relationship must be de determined from what is called the, the closest Clapeyron equation uh, and in that case you will see that omega v w is related to x v w into molecular weight of vapor divided by molecular weight of the mixture and x v w of course, is equal to p saturation at t w divided by p tot x v w would be given by uh, exponential of minus h f g divided by r g into 1 over t w minus t b p. For all liquid fuels typically you will have a boiling point known and h f g known and therefore, x v w can be uh, recovered uh, for a given t w. So, one tries in such cases assume a t w recover a uh, calculate x v w from that you calculate omega v w and check whether b m is equal to b h as on the previous slide or otherwise go on changing t w till you get convergence. Now, I turn to uh, the, the problem of uh, mass transfer with heat transfer and simple chemical reaction. Now, what is simple chemical reaction? Well, uh, let us consider a highly volatile liquid fuel that burns in the considered phase according to the simple uh, chemical reaction SCR. Uh, liquids usually burn by first evaporating in the gas phase without any change in composition uh, that is the chemical formula of the fuel does not change when it comes out uh, as in the form of a vapor and but then it burns in the vapor phase as a gaseous in the gaseous phase as, as a homogeneous combustion and uh, we say that uh, simple chemical formula reaction simply implies that 1 kilogram of fuel uh, combines with R s t kilograms of oxygen to give you 1 plus R s t kilograms of products. Now, where R s t is the stoichiometric ratio of the fuel and you must have learned from your stoichiometry how to evaluate say for example, a hydrocarbon fuel how to evaluate the value of R s t. Now, in this problem therefore, we have three species the fuel species, the oxygen species uh, and the product which is itself a mixture, but it is a product species which we take it as a single species. Then we will have three equations and because the chemical reaction is present you will have convective flux and a diffusion flux d by d by off would equal rate of depletion of fuel. We therefore, I have said magnitude of R f u with a negative sign likewise oxygen 2 would deplete uh, minus R o whereas, the product would increase and therefore, it has a plus sign in front of here. So, we have three equations because we have three spaces uh, with uh, three mass transfer equations. If we add the three, we, we must retrieve the bulk mass conservation equation because the addition of the fuels, uh, fuel, oxygen and product sum of these will be equal to 1 and when all these are summed that will be equal 1. So, d 1 by d y would be 0. So, all sum of the diffusion space fluxes would add to 0 and uh, therefore, you will be having uh, a n w d by d y of n w into sum of all these quantities and therefore, the sum of the r k must also be equal to 0 because the bulk mass conservation. So, therefore, the SCR simply implies that uh, uh, R O 2 the oxygen depletion rate is equal to R S T times fuel depletion rate. Uh, where on the other hand, the product generation rate would be minus 1 plus R S T times fuel depletion rate 
and uh, uh, likewise the diffusion of oxygen would be R S T times m dot f double preview and product will be uh, 1 minus minus 1 plus R S T m double dot f u. So, if I now divide this, this equation by R S T and then subtract uh, the resulting equation I, I divide by R S T throughout and which is a constant and, and subtract that equation from this equation then you will see that R F u minus R O 2 divided by R S T would be of course 0 and as a result you will get an equation which is like this d by d y of a n w phi minus gamma m d phi by d y equal to 0 and phi will be omega f u minus omega o 2 by r s t. Likewise, if I divide uh, this e third equation by 1 plus r s t throughout n add then again the right hand side would 0 and I will have a phi which will stand for omega f u plus omega product over 1 plus r s t and we said that any equation of this form with the 0 source term uh, implies that phi is a conserved property. So, we have again got an equation of conserved property uh, like the inert mass transfer problem and therefore, we would have n solution of that would be n w equal to g star m ln phi infinity minus phi t over phi w minus phi t. Uh, equal to g star m ln 1 plus b m where b m would be given now by this quantity phi infinity minus phi w over phi w minus phi t and phi can stand for this group or it can stand for this group. Then one uses the appropriate group depending on the convenience of the problem at hand. g star m would be of course, gamma m divided by r w in a spherical system or gamma m divided by l in the plane system. The important thing to note is that even in a uh, in a problem involving combustion, uh, we are able to reduce the problem mathematically to a form just like that of a uh, evaporation of water in the absence of heat transfer. So, let me now turn to uh, energy part of the of the because whenever combustion takes place there would be heat transfer. So, now we would have d by d y of a n w h m minus k m d t d y would equal d uh, of the diffusion mass transfer of d y. You remember from slide 1 this is the right hand side and this is the equation that I am writing now. This is the energy equation then equal to the right hand side this is the right hand side where h sub k is the species enthalpy and uh, as you will know that whenever you have reacting fuel uh, we write it as h naught f k is the, the enthalpy of formation plus C p k into T minus T ref or for the short I will write as h naught f k C p k delta T. So, hence making use of definitions of phi let us say h m would be simply uh, omega k h k and therefore, it will be omega k h naught f k plus delta t into sigma c p k omega k. Then the first part of the term would simply result in omega f u h naught f u plus omega o 2 h naught f o 2 plus uh, omega product into h naught f product uh, and c p k omega k would be simply uh, uh, c p m the mixture specific heat into delta t. Now, from the previous slide we have defined phi. So, I can say that omega over 2 by R s t will be minus omega product over R s t. So, that is what I am going to use here. So, I am replacing omega product by uh, 1 minus R s t over R s t omega over 2 equal plus C p m delta t and omega O 2 itself would be equal to omega f u R s t into all this and as a result you will see I get omega f u into h naught f u plus r h t h naught o 2 uh, h naught f o 2 minus 1 plus r s t h naught f product plus c p m delta t. This essentially means that uh, this is the enthalpy total enthalpy of the reactants 1 mole uh, of uh, fuel combines with r s t moles of, uh, of oxygen therefore, this is the enthalpy of the reactants and this is the enthalpy of the product. So, the reactant enthalpy minus product enthalpy as you know is the heat of combustion 
and therefore, you will get omega f u del h c plus c p m into t minus t ref, where delta t is written as t minus t ref again as I said there. So, we get a enthalpy equal to heat of combustion into omega fuel. Now, of course, I have here replaced omega O 2 and omega product in terms of omega f u, but I could do it the other way. I can replace omega f u and omega O 2 in terms of omega product or I can replace uh, uh, omega f u and omega product in terms of omega 2 and I will get different expressions involving del h c which I will show you shortly. But uh, now, let us consider the right hand side which is minus d by d y of a uh, sigma k m y k h k. So, here summation of k m double prime y k h k would be simply h naught f u c p f u delta t uh, into this is the expression for m y f u plus the same quantity for oxygen and the same quantity for product. Now, we make an important assumption which is always made now for gaseous mixtures uh, specific heats uh, are functions of temperature and for different species they are somewhat different, but they are not so different that we cannot make an assumption of equal specific heats. And if we assume that this uh, each uh, species has the same specific heat then it would simply equal the mixture specific heat. So, that is the assumption I am going to make uh, uh, and use the circumetric relation omega O 2 equal to R s t f u omega f u and omega product equal to minus 1 minus R s t omega f u and if I do that then this entire relationship can be uh, written as minus del h c rho m d omega f u by d y because C p m delta t into sigma k d or d omega k by d y would because the sigma omega k would simply add up to 1 and that is equal to 0. Uh, and also from the previous slide we have shown that C p m d t by d y is equal to d h m by d y minus remember. So, if I take differential of this equation with respect to y then the C p m into d t by d y would, uh, would be d h m by d y. Uh, into minus del h c into d omega f u by d y and that is what I have written here. So, now I have uh, this expression and I have this expression which I am going to make use of a, in our in deriving the right hand side. So, the right hand side can now be formed which is as you know is uh, d by d y of. So, I can now take everything on this side and uh, you can see that I can transform this equation into A times N W H m into K m by C p m D H m by D y minus del H c D omega F u by D y. This is essentially the K D T D y term. Uh, this is the del H c rho m D D omega F u by D y which is the right hand side term. Uh, and then if I again make the Lewis number equal to 1 assumption that is alpha m equal to D then you will see that uh, gamma m uh, this k m by c p m can also be written as rho m into d uh, and uh, equal to gamma h let us say. So, then you will see that this term would get cancelled with that term and I would get a times n w h m gamma h into d h m by d y equal to 0 and again a conserved property relationship has been obtained from the energy equation. So, the solution would be again same as that for inert mass transfer with B h defined as H m infinity minus H m w uh, H m w minus H m t and this is the G star m h. So, again you will see that in a simple chemical reaction we have got the same uh, formula both from mass transfer equation as well as from the energy equation. So, as I said uh, earlier that we can define our mixture in variety of ways for a simple chemical reaction. One is to say H f u is equal to C p m delta t omega f u del h c which is what I did earlier. H o 2 will then be equal to C p m delta t and H product will be C p m delta t because of the equal specific heat. But uh, I can also associate del h c with oxygen in which case H f u will be C p m delta t H o 2 will be C p m delta t into omega 2 o 2 r s t del h c and H H product. And then again you have H H few H O 2 
and I can associate now with omega del h c with the product mass fraction. So, there are three ways in which you can do it. For a liquid fuel burning in air, we often choose second type because we often know omega 2, omega O 2 concentrations much better. So, uh, then H m will be omega k H k would be simply C p m into T minus T ref omega O 2 by R s T del H c which is from this three relationships. Uh, and if I now take for a moment that T ref is equal to T w which I do not know usually, then uh, I will get for convenience rather, not, rather than not knowing uh, where T ref uh, if I take T ref equal to T w then B h which was uh, H m infinity minus H m w over H m w minus H m t would transform to C p m t infinity minus T w del H c omega O 2 infinity minus omega O 2 w divided by R s t del H c into omega O 2 w by R s t minus C p l t t minus T w, where of course, omega O t O 2 t is 0 because oxygen does not exist uh, in the fuel and T t is known or knowable somehow. If T w was already if the fuel surface was already at the boiling point T w by T b p, then of course, no oxygen would survive at the surface and therefore, that would be 0. That would be 0 because the fuel uh, concentration there would be 1. Uh, if T w is not equal to T b p, then of course, omega O 2 and T w relations must be established iteratively by uh, balancing B m and B h, uh, where B h is given by this. So, you assume a T w, evaluate the B h value, then evaluate the B m, uh, then evaluate the omega V w, uh, 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 rather omega O 2 w and then again uh, get the get the balance done uh, in, in favor of uh, till convergence is obtained, where uh, B m is given by this relationship, this relation and uh, you will see phi value now will be known in all states. For example, omega f u in the infinity state is 0, whereas omega 2 is known. So, phi infinity is known. In the t state, omega f u will be 1 and omega o 2 will be 0. So, phi t is known. Omega w will depend on uh, the temperature which will determine omega f u and the remaining will be omega o 2. So, we can determine the, the relationships in that manner and carry out iterations. Now, I come to mass transfer with heat transfer and arbitrary chemical reaction. What I mean, do I mean by arbitrary chemical reaction? By arbitrary chemical reaction, this typically occur in solids combustion. So, for example, let us say consider burning of a graphite C star given by C star at very, very high temperatures T w uh, of the order of 1950 or much higher. Then, then there are several reactions taking place. The first four reactions take place at the surface of the graphite C star half O 2 equal to C O, uh, whose equilibrium constant is infinity. C star C O 2 would be 2 C O, who is in again K p is 4000. C star H 2 O equal to C O plus H 2 1230 and C star equal to 2 H 2 equal to C H 4 1 by 790. CO thus generated and hydrogen and C H 4 would then burn in the gas phase. Of course, here uh, the K p is so, so low at uh, 1950 that hardly any C H 4 would, would be formed and therefore, we can say that uh, very small amounts of C H 4 will be present. Uh, CO would then then react with oxygen to produce CO2, which would then uh, dissociate uh, in this fashion. CO2 will be uh, CO plus half O2 giving you CO2 and H2O would dissociate to give you H2 plus O2. Again, the, the K p is very, very low and therefore, the reverse reactions would be dominant uh, producing CO2 and, uh, and H2O. So, for such a complex mechanism, it is best to conserve the elements. We have uh, elements C, H and O in this case. You can see elements are C, H and O. Of course, uh, nitrogen is not present in the fuel uh, and therefore, uh, we write this and as you recall, the element 
mass fraction equation is always a conserved property equation. So, let the infinity state comprise of CO2, H2O and N2 only that is the full products. That, so, the noting the equilibrium constant K p for each reaction it can be shown that in the considered phase CH4 cannot survive in appreciable magnitudes. Hence, it will comprise the considered phase will essentially comprise of CO2, H2, CO and H2O only. Similarly, in the W state only CO and H2 will survive uh, and therefore, since spaces change uh, in different, different states it is best to define a comp uh, uh, eta c equal to uh, omega c star over 12 by 44 omega c o 2 equal to that uh, eta h would be given by that and eta o it will be given by that uh, composition. Thus, we have three equations for eta c, eta h and eta o. So, instead of solving three equations uh, we need any one can be solved but uh, you will find that not all these quantities on the right hand side are very well known in the three states. So, the best thing is to derive a composite quantity which we shall take as uh, eta c minus 3 by 4 n o and from this, this relationship uh, you will see that I can form a new variable omega c minus 3 by 11 omega c o 2 minus 2 by 3 omega h 2 o. Now, I can definitely form phi w equal to n c minus 3 by n o w equal to 0 uh, in the w state. In the t state only eta c will be 1 uh, or omega c will be 1 all these are zeros. So, they are put to 0 and in the infinity state I do not have any carbon, but there is omega C O 2 and omega H 2 O. So, they are retained and as a result I will get N W equal to uh, L N 1 plus B M, where B M would be 3 by 11 C O 2 infinity plus 2 by 3 omega H 2 O infinity. Both these are known in the infinity state, uh, because that is what we said uh, that we know only only the products in the infinity state. Uh, so, and therefore, I can calculate the mass transfer rate uh, of graphite burning simply by knowing C O 2 at in the infinity state and omega H 2 O in, in the infinity state. So, in this case because I know the uh, know the relationship connecting uh, element mass fractions with the uh, uh, with the species mass fractions. Uh, I am able to create a composite phi uh, as eta c minus 3 by 4 simply by observation this and um, this manipulation is simply by observation such that I do not want any of the things any species on the right hand side whose concentration I would not know in the infinity w and t states. And this is what I have, I have been able to achieve so that uh, the calculation of mass transfer becomes easy. So, in summary I would say that we have analyzed all types of mass transfer problems uh, from the by converting every problem to a conserved property equation uh, and psi has to be defined appropriately. So, that n w equal to g b with g by g star equal to l n 1 plus b by b and b is equal to psi infinity minus psi w over uh, psi w minus psi t and a is 4 pi r square or a constant. Now, for inert mass transfer without heat transfer psi was equal to omega phi as you know and gamma was simply equal to rho m d. For inert mass transfer with heat transfer we had psi equal to omega v and h m and uh, uh, we made the assumption of Lewis number equal to 1. For inert mass transfer sorry for mass transfer with heat transfer in chemical reaction we choose psi equal to appropriate phi and mixture enthalpy. We make the Lewis number equal to 1 assumption and also we say that the specific heat of participating species would be equal equal to say specific heat of the mixture. And in the in the mass transfer with arbitrary chemical reaction we, we showed that psi can be simply appropriate phi and gamma m as rho m diffusivity. So, you can see that uh, uh, a variety of problems have been reduced to conserved property relationship through appropriate uh, and justifiable assumptions 
which makes uh, calculation of the mass transfer rate uh, simple. Uh, and we are able to derive analytically derived relationship connecting N w the mass transfer to the driving force B and the relationship we found is a logarithmic one. In the next lecture, we will see how what the Kuwait flow model has to say.